G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with some daily race B action that I recorded a few days ago. It's actually the current week of the races, would you believe it, I've managed to get the video this quick. But we jumped in, did a quick qualifying lap, by that I mean we didn't spend much time on it, the lap itself is not that quick. About two seconds off the pace. But the car we're in, Mitsubishi Lancer, is a bit of a strange car. It's only got five gears. The gears are quite long and it's pretty crap in a straight line. But it was somehow the fastest car for this combination. But we're going to have a look at a few races here today, beginning with this one. We've got this yellow Peugeot. Just keep an eye on it because it's a bit all over the place. A little bit of contact coming through turn five. And I managed to dive down the inside of turn six. But does the Peugeot hold it around the outside? He doesn't manage to do so, we managed to make our way past there, which is no surprise in the handling section. I have four-wheel drive uh, and a lot of grip in this Lancer, and the Peugeot's front-wheel drive with no grip in the corners at all. We'll see how we go as we go through Dunlop Carrera at the bottom of the circuit. That is turn seven, heading up the hill, just behind the Volkswagen. We're going to fast forward up to turn ten, where we come into the braking zone, and we get a nice little punt there from the Peugeot behind. He does keep position, he doesn't actually overtake, but we'll see uh, if he can have a, another attempt at a bit of a cleaner move coming up towards the Vidal chicane, turns 13 and 14 here at Nürburgring GP, onto the brakes, and no, he dives up the inside, I take to the grass, and oh my goodness, I get reset, even though I got pushed into that, I end up getting reset off the back of the pack by about two and a half seconds. And that is only going to gain as we get a poor run through the chicane, thanks to being completely stationary. It took about a lap to catch back up, and you can see uh, this group up ahead kind of imploding a little bit. Missing GTR spearing off to the right-hand side, and the Renault um, again trophy picking himself up a half-second penalty. And as we head up the inside of turn 15, we turn look behind. He's got three and a half-second of penalties now. So the penalty system actually doing something correct this time. He's going to serve those penalties and uh, we remain behind the Jaguar all the way up until the start of lap four which is the final lap of Daily Race B here so let's see if we can get that part this let's try that sentence again let's see if we can get past this Jaguar as we head through the final lap here of this race here so behind the Jaguar of course that car ha is going to have a straight line speed advantage I'm probably going to have a handling advantage um, somehow handling kind of trumps uh, straight line speed at this track given that the Lancer is the fastest uh, is the fastest meta car here um, But the Jaguar is going to be difficult to overtake Although he's going to make it easy if he keeps sliding deep into the corners like he's done in two occasions there at the previous two corners of turns five and six and a duck into the slipstream Heading down towards turn seven looking on the right hand side just before the number tower the big tower on the inside of the circuit hitting the brakes on there and you can see the Jaguar takes a much tighter line and gains a little bit overall on the exit but heading up the hill through Michael Schumacher S I'm going to have the slipstream of course although unfortunately it leads up into turn 10 which is a 90 degree left here it's not that great for overtaking as such I've just backed out there I'm not going for the move at this corner I perhaps could have and gone a little bit more aggressive but I would rather try and get the move uh, at the end of the back straight into the chicane which is a better spot uh, than the shorter straight leading into turn 10 as we head through uh, turn 11 we get a nice exit onto the back straight heading through turn 12 easy flat in the slipstream of the Jaguar we're going to look to the inside just to put him off we're not quite close enough and he does indeed break late he falls for that and he slides very very deep into the corner and I managed to make my way past in uh, lovely fashion uh, no time lost at all so I just showed my nose on the inside I was a bit too far back and probably wasn't going to go for that dive at all uh, but it just pressured him into a mistake we managed to pick up a top 10 although I think we started 10th and f but we did fall to the back of the field so if you have a look there 19 seconds off the leader not fantastic uh, but we'll see if we can redeem ourselves in the next race here jump straight into it we're uh, up in seventh after a slight improvement on our qualifying time in the slipstream of the BMW M4 up ahead uh, now that car has seven gears so he's gonna have probably a quite a significant acceleration advantage but that is no uh, no 
issue there as we get completely dived by the other Mitsubishi Lancer, probably going a little bit too conservative into turn one, uh, but we now stuck behind a slower car here, and I feel as though I'm definitely quicker than this guy straight off the bat as I kind of take as he takes the wrong line into turn three. Uh, turn four is very wide, about a car width further to the outside than you really want to be, uh, but where there's no way to go uh, down the inside of this corner here as it quickly switches back in the opposite direction. So you're either on the outside to go on the inside, or you're on the inside, which will turn to the outside, which is not good to get an overtake done. You'll probably just end up losing more time than it's worth. Uh, so as we head through there, we go a little bit too wide off turn six, and we just duck into the slipstream of the Lancer, who I feel breaks extremely early for turn seven there. I was hitting my braking point perfectly. Uh, I watched that. Oh my goodness, a one second penalty to boot. Lovely. Now I watched that several times and I was just hitting my normal braking point, so I definitely felt as though the Lancer up ahead broke very, very early, but I'm the following car, so I guess it's technically my fault. Let's even go around the outside of turn two, however, and just assert our dominance. Is he going to leave us the room on the outside? Not really, he just edges us out, uh, but he was very well up the inside at that point, so that was his corner and fair game. Up the inside of turn three, translates to the outside of turn four. Does he leave us the room on the outside? He definitely does there. Lovely bit of racing there. He has the slipstream of the Subaru, but we are going to come up to serve this penalty, unfortunately. So all this fighting is just really for nothing. I'm about to lose it all anyway, uh, but we're going to duck behind the Subaru. Mitsubishi behind had a little look up the inside of turn six, but thought better of it. Thought he'd just wait until I serve my one second penalty here which is going to be quite painful this car takes ages to accelerate so you can see we get overtaken by the Lancer and by another BMW M4 so as I was saying earlier M4 has seven gears it's going to have advantageous acceleration compared to the Lancer with only five so you can imagine how much longer the Lancer gears have to be uh, to keep relative pace with the uh, with the uh, other other cars with six or seven gears gets a bit messy into turn one a couple of cars go for a dive on one another and you can see everyone switches over to the right and I get off the inside of two cars here but unfortunately I think I break a little bit early or the BMW gets hit from behind on my right hand side and just pushes him to keep himself around the outside of turn three which translates to the inside of turn four but unfortunately he gets a poor exit we duck into the slipstream of the Mitsubishi Lancer once again coming into turn five another little bit of a bump and unfortunately that just loses enough speed for the other BMW to get up ahead down on the radar more dives going on so you can see this race is very quickly going uh, very far down the toilet uh, I think this race in general is pretty carnagey to be honest so a lot of dives a lot of contact going on and probably not helping the case by that move there as we go for a little bit of a dive down the inside of BMW it doesn't quite come off and we make a little bit of contact, but that BMW just has enough straight line speed for him to keep the position. I was going to give that back to him anyway, uh, but he gets that done very well. I duck into the slipstream, give him a little bit of a bump up the RTL straight, or is that on the other side of the circuit? Yes, the RTL straight is the other straight in between turn four and five, my mistake. But as we head through this very long chicane, I suppose you could call it, onto the back straight, we're going to have the slipstream of the BMW, and you're about to see how difficult it is in this Lancer to actually get an overtake done. So this car is very good in time trial. I think it gains so much in the corners that it can afford to lose out on the straight. But in the race, the straight is really where you overtake. If someone goes for another dive on the inside of the chicane, I don't quite get reset that time, but I just come back across the track and just edge him off a little bit. A bit of karma, a bit of giving him what he deserves there. And uh, thankfully, no penalty to report of even though I did cut the track as we look behind it's all kicked off behind there not quite sure what's going on uh, but we head into the final lap now and we skip all the way to the end of the lap we're not quite able to get this overtake done the BMW I'm switching left switching right to put him off but he hits his mark perfectly and it's going to be very difficult to get it overtake into this final corner but you can see we've got the run out of the chicane onto the right hand side breaking point the white van on the right hand side and it was just a bit too deep and I make a bit of contact with the BMW. I look down on the radar and see that he's kind of held it and he's still just one position behind. So I let off to give him that back the position, but I let off too much. And the other Peugeot gets me as well by hardly anything, about three hundredths of a second. So I end up losing two positions at the end there. Uh, but I finished ninth. Very, very terrible race that one, but we'll move on once again straight into race three.
starting sixth this time we're behind a Nissan GTR which is a fairly good car in group four uh, there's a little bit of contact in the exit of turn four there by myself but the Nissan just gets back ahead thanks to its acceleration which is no worries at all coming down into turn five take a nice tight line through turn five and into turn six someone goes for a dive up the inside there's a bit of contact there and he's on my right hand side and uh, I'm just going side by side down the straight. A Mazda Tenza Group 4. Not sure how good that car is. Evidently not too great as it loses out on the straight compared to the Lancer. So you can only imagine how bad a car has to be to lose out to the Lancer on the straight. Uh, but as we head up towards Michael Schumacher, S, he's on the outside. I'm going to have that tighter, shorter line on the inside. And the Mazda falls in behind. He's going to have to grab my slipstream. He's falling back quite a lot, to be honest. Uh, he's over nearly three tenths. Skip ahead to the chicane, hit the braking point nicely, leap over the kerbs there and there, lovely rendition of the chicane, and that Mustang just gets edged off onto the end, out on the outside of the circuit, and then Nissan gets a one second penalty for his troubles there. Uh, that is not good for the Nissan, it is good for me, because I'll get this position up when he serves that penalty, heading down the straight in between turn six and turn seven. Nissan comes across my front there, trying to grab the slipstream of the Subaru, perhaps not aware that I was so close, but only a little bit of contact, so nothing too sinister, but uh, we just deal with that. Mazda tries to go up the inside, but gets way too tight on the inside there, so he's not going to get uh, any momentum from that slow and that tight into the corner, but he's got a nose looking up the inside at turn three, and yeah, he just misses the braking point, unfortunately, and just shoves me off, but he's over there on the left-hand side. He's just letting me go, so that's fair enough, I suppose. Thank you very much. For that, clearly just a mistake, but we'll play and game on. Side by side down the straight with the Mustang that got edged off on the exit of the chicane in the previous lap. And you can see he gets that move done fairly well. A lot of grip in that Mustang, evidently. More dives going on on the radar if you happen to look down at that point there. Uh, but the Subaru up ahead is about to serve his 1.5 second penalty. So we're going to gain that position up into seventh. So we're now behind... This group of three cars with the Nissan that is in the middle of the pack again, just behind another Lancer and just behind the Mustang. So this is beginning to get very tasty as we head up through Michael Schumacher S once again. That's turns eight and nine. We have a good run with the triple slipstream there. So we've got three cars ahead of us heading up into turn 10, breaking point nicely. A lot of grip through turn 10. I felt as though the Lancer was very strong through turn 10 and this corner here. Uh, which I suppose is good. You don't even need to brake in the Lancer heading through uh, that right hander onto the back straight. Uh, but due to every other car being better in a straight line and two of them ahead having slipstream, I'm going to drop off the back of the pack. And uh, the Mazda Atenza has my slipstream, but as we head into the chicane, is there going to be any contact? Nope. Lovely. We cut those corners nicely, although there is contact up ahead. And the Mitsubishi Lancer, driven by Go Drifter, has drifted off the track. And he's now on the outside of the final corner, which is not where you want to be. But he's just where I want to accelerate into. So I have to take a slightly conservative line out the exit of that corner. He was right on the outside apex where I wanted to put the car on the exit. But uh, I can't just push him off for no reason. Uh, but you can see it's getting very close behind. Two cars side by side behind me. I've got a slightly defensive line into turn one. A little bit of contact between the Nissan and the Mustang up ahead. And on the exit of turn one, a car was almost looking for the switch back on my right-hand side, but unfortunately gets swamped by the pack again. And we're now firmly kissing the back bumper of the Nissan, and we get dived by not one but two cars and get sort of muscled off the track. And that Mazda Atenza once again going highly aggressive. Probably needs to rein that back a little bit. You can see we've lost two positions now. We're going to grab the slipstream off the land cell because we're at danger of losing a third. Uh, but we have the inside of turn five but unfortunately that Subaru gets that move around the outside we've still got somebody behind me who gives us a nice bump going into turn six and that just allows another player into the mix there so we've got one two three four I think there was another three cars behind me so we've got seven cars in this pack here at this point heading in towards the bottom hairpin any more dives no thankfully not although the Mitsubishi goes slightly deep up ahead and just comes onto my exit apex again so that's rather irritating but we're going to head up through Michael Schumacher S into turn 10 into the braking zone. We're going to receive a punt from behind to go into the back of Go Drifter, who ends up off the track there. Not my fault, mate, but I don't know if he uh, thinks otherwise. He completely comes across the track on the exit there and he does nothing else. He achieves nothing but spinning himself out, making himself look like an absolute idiot. 
Uh, so he's succeeded in only one thing there, uh, and the penalty system evidently thought that was my fault as well. I'm not sure who it was actually behind, but there's another car behind. I've received another punt. That's what, four punts in this video today? In three races. So <laughs> this is not great. I actually get another half second penalty for that one. I was pushed into that. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut the corner. Oh my goodness. We're going to serve that heading down this straight. We're going to get overtaken by this Aston Martin. Heading down into the bottom hairpin. Uh, I don't think we're going to manage to overtake him for a little while, which is detrimental as we're on the last lap. But we'll grab his slipstream at least as he kind of makes a complete hash of turn 10, turning in way too early as to come out of it. Ends up with no speed on the exit, but he unfortunately has the inside and runs in a bit hot, gives me a bit of contact and I'm not able to get onto the power as quickly as I would like, so I'm down in ninth. I have the slipstream of the Aston Martin, but I just can't get up to speed as I got this very strong Jaguar F-Type heading up the inside of turn 12 and I got another car on my right hand side heading in towards the chicane. Yellow flag is out, does that mean we're going to gain a position? It does, if someone gets reset in front of us, but we've lost three positions on this final lap here, which is not good, although there is a half second penalty ahead, so if I can finish within one second of that car, I can gain another position. Position. So let's see where we finish. So we exit the final corner a little bit late. We'll grab the slipstream at least. Is it going to be 10th? It's going to be 9th. Okay. I guess that is better than nothing. So it was just under a 10th that we got that uh, position by. You can see I'm not plus 19.914 and he's plus 20 exactly. But unfortunately that race just put put us into the lower into a lower band of SR and put us into the next split so uh, as we come into turn one yeah you know it there's going to be a dive and I almost spin around uh, very difficult in the Lancer to spin around no oversteer in this car just a load of understeer but we get dived into turn one and I kind of need to win this race just because uh, every other vehicle every other driver here is like B rated C rated D rated so if I come so if, if these people beat me, that's going to absolutely murder my DR. Because if I get beaten by people with lower DR, then my DR takes a massive hit compared to beating, uh, uh, compared to losing to people with higher DR. So you can see it's all a bit messy, and that's kind of to be expected as this car doesn't even take the exit apex properly. But I'm now on the inside as someone tries to pull out from the slipstream, not really, not realizing I was there. It's another Mitsubishi Lancer. We're going to dive down the inside. Is he going to keep it around the outside? He is not. He's going to slide off the track. So goodbye to that fellow here. And you can see the uh, Peugeot RCZ very slow on the apex. That car is not really the choice for this track. You need to get the exit out of the corners, and it's hard to do in an FF car. Uh, but no, nevertheless. Let's see if we can get these two positions up. Heading in towards turn 10, looking around the outside of the Peugeot in second, who just bumps the Peugeot in first. Uh, that thankfully loses the, uh, the Peugeot in second. All his speed I'm able to get past, and I am going to have the slipstream off the back of this Peugeot in first, all the way down the back straight. The car behind has lost the slipstream from me, so there's going to be no real danger of a dive into the chicane here, but I'm going to look up the inside, because I, I know how early these cars can break, and you can see there, very, very early as I make the corner, uh, but uh, we just cut that second apex, a bit of a strong move there. Do we get ourselves a penalty for that one? We do indeed, but look down on the radar, dives and punts galore down there, ramming for money, uh, taking my racing team and taking it, uh, taking it on themselves, quite ironically, because I don't ram, but I'm part of R4 ram, but now we serve that penalty, uh, we managed to gain out all of that gap so we don't lose a position and by the end of the race we, we uh, gapped the field by nearly 8 seconds so it just goes to show you can easily get caught down in the bottom of that pack as you can see I was way quicker than the rest of the field but somehow at the start of the race I still managed to be stuck behind three cars for the majority of the first lap that brings us to this race here now this was one that I thought to myself if this is a good race that's gonna be the end and as we come into the first corner I bet you can guess what's going to happen. Absolutely nothing. <laughs>Oh man, get wrecked viewers. What, what did you think was going to happen? Uh, but we get through turn one cleanly, so we're back up in the split we were originally in. And we get through lap one, and we actually get through lap two as well, without any uh, without any incidents to report off. We actually drop off the back of the top four, so they're obviously slightly quicker than me. Uh, um, well, I guess that is obvious, because I qualify behind them. Two of them pick up penalties through the final chicane, so that... 
kind of leads us into a podium for us. So as long as we can play our cards right here, uh, let's see if we can get these two positions. They're quite far ahead, but they slow down for a second. I decided to switch to the inside at last second there because I knew they were going to unghost before I got to them. So I thought, well, I want the inside. And it kind of worked out. Have a look at that. So that was a split second decision. Decided to sail down the inside. I knew they were slow and they were going to unghost. I knew the inside is the place to be. Uh, so we find ourselves up in third, but unfortunately that does mean the two cars with the two faster drivers have my slipstream uh, and that is going to prove to be difficult to defend from as we head up through turn 11. We are now onto the back straight. Super gets a very good run out of that corner actually and you can see he's going to go onto my right hand side which is the inside for turn 12 which I would say is just fast enough uh, to gain yourself an advantage, or just tight enough rather to gain the car on the inside an advantage. You can see he's got the run around the outside. Is he going to force around the outside? He does. I have to leave him a little bit of space, so I left him just enough curb there to keep a wheel on, therefore not give him a penalty, and he makes his way past. So we've lost that position there. We're going to have the slipstream down into turn one, but that Subaru gets a very good exit there and darts to the inside unexpectedly, so that's going to lose myself a momentary tiny sliver of slipstream for the moment that he was moving to the inside but he's hell bent on going very very defensive so let's see if he can run deep and I can get a cut back as we head into the final corner boom my goodness that was very very ambitious there absolutely flies in and that's just put us off the back of the Subaru immediately so you can see one small incident like that you're just off the back immediately heading into turn three another car goes for a dive it's all getting a bit messy on this final lap here and he just slams it up the inside again and sends me very wide, almost onto the other way out of Nürburgring, uh, but just loses us enough momentum to make this other Subaru go past. We've got the divey boys going on, trying to earn their diving license. They're doing very well at that, proving that they have a lot of diving skills. So hopefully they can wipe each other out and we can still pick ourselves up fourth. You can see how aggressively the black Subaru in fourth went defensive on the exit of turn six there. Uh, but let's see, does the Subaru ahead of me go for the dive on the inside? He kind of looks for it, but I think uh, the black Subaru carried a bit more speed into the corner and the uh, blue Subaru wasn't able to get up the inside. Uh, heading up through Michael Schumacher S once again. Drinking game for how many times I've said heading up through Michael Schumacher S. You'd be absolutely wrecked by now. Um, but let's just focus back on the racing. Heading up towards turn 10. I suppose you can add that to the drinking game too. <laughs> anyway, um, onto the back straight. We're going to have the slipstream again of these two cars up ahead. It's going to be fairly difficult to get a move because they're four tenths behind uh, and the blue car has the slipstream off the black car but he goes up the inside at turn 12. They're side by side heading into the chicane. It's going to give me a chance here. So let's see, do they wipe each other out? Uh, the, bl the blue car takes a very slow entry. I slam it up the inside and it gets slammed off the track. So no, they're not going to wipe each other out, they're going to wipe me out. I guess that was partly my fault, I kind of went for a very late dive, but the gap opened up and the blue car went very slow onto the entry, so I kind of was left with nowhere to go, but I was edged off the track and I ultimately ended up losing the position to the Mustang in 6th. So come home in 7th. Man, what a really tough load of races and honestly... The previous sort of kind of two races, I was thinking to myself, oh, this will be the last one if it's a good one, and I still had two very dirty races absolutely loaded with contact. So I decided to give it up there. So that's where we're going to leave this one. This I was actually doing this on the same day that the Nations Cup combination at Sardinia Windmills was going on in Group B. Uh, I honestly think... I probably would have had cleaner racing in the in the Nations Cup combo. I didn't do that combination because I was like four, five seconds off off the pace per lap race pace. Car, uh, other drivers in my split were doing like 117s, 118s. I was doing 122. So I just thought to myself, you know what? I can't be bothered. I'm more of a track racer. So I decided to go into daily race B uh, because the shorter format race is usually bring up some good videos for you and they've done exactly that. My DR took a bit of a hit, I've dropped, dropped about 3,000 DR, uh, but uh, I guess in the grand scheme of things it's not too bad. But was what was pretty bad was the amount of contact in those races. Uh, definitely a bit dirty there, but nevertheless I think I got myself a decent video out of it and I hope you thought I did too. Do hit the like button if you did think so and do subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos from me, leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, constructive criticism as always. 
very much appreciated. But that's at the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.